Love and marriage, love and marriage. So uh, this week we have a really great way of kicking off Ordinary Time. It's actually the second Sunday of Ordinary Time. The baptism of the Lord was the first. Uh, and uh, we hear this week the wedding feast at Cana. And as well, uh, especially in our first reading, uh, we get some glimpsed into uh, the, like, it's really almost the primary image that God uses throughout the scriptures uh, to talk about his relationship with his people. He does so in terms of a marriage covenant. And I think I've mentioned this before, but, you know, to hit it again, you know, back in, uh, the, in the Garden of Eden, you know, Adam and Eve, uh, the, the, the world begins with a marriage. But all throughout, you know, and it makes the most sense when you think about what, what really happened. When sin entered the world, God and his people were separated. So his plan is to bring them back together. And in the purest sense of the word marriage, that's, that's what it is. Is a coming together of, of two two people, you know, two two things, two ideas, whatever whatever it is. And so, even throughout the Old Testament, God refers to uh, ancient Israel uh, as His bride, you know. And especially in Isaiah 62 that we hear as our first reading uh, this this year, uh, this week. Um, we hear him refer to, you know, Jerusalem as a bride, you know, your your maker shall marry you. And um, again, you know, it's not a it's not a strange thing. It's a conceptual thing, you know, and uh, the reality that it's the whole people that will be married to God when he brings them back together. And so when we fast forward to the wedding feast at Cana, you know, you, you think about this this situation and you, you have a wedding and uh, whose responsibility was it uh, to provide the wine for the guests? It was the bridegroom's responsibility. It was the groom's responsibility. So you have this situation and uh, our Blessed Mother recognizes the, the absence of, uh, of providence here. Uh, and so she asked Jesus to step in and provide the wine. But she's not just asking Jesus to provide the wine for this earthly wedding. Essentially what she's doing is asking Jesus to reveal himself as the divine bridegroom. In this miracle that, that he would work, you know, she's suggesting that he show the people, I am in fact in the same role as God the Father and I have come into the world to bring together God and his people. But what does Jesus say? It, it's not my time. You know, this isn't, this isn't it, you know? And so he provides the wine uh, that is needed at the wedding reception, but he's going to provide the, the true wine uh, of God's love when he actually does bring together heaven and earth, you know, God and his people. And he does that on the cross. That's actually Jesus' his wedding, you know, is, 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 is on the cross. When he dies on the cross, uh, that's his coming together. Uh, with uh, with his people, right? So, so it's the wine of God's love that he will provide in abundance as he goes into, when he goes back to heaven and sends down the Holy Spirit and uh, allows the church to, to be formed and grow and, and, uh, and all of those individuals being united to Christ at their baptism collectively become the bride of Christ, the church. So, you know, the wedding feast at Cana is in some sense, you know, you could say it's, um, you know, a beginning of the revelation of Jesus as, um, as the, the divine bridegroom, but it's really a foreshadowing of what's yet to come. And really, you know, in the life of the church as, uh, you know, as the bride of Christ, you know, where do we renew that covenant? Where do we renew that relationship? But as God and his people come together again and again at the Eucharistic table, right? It's, it's at the mass, it's in the Eucharist that God and his people come together, you know, and uh, not just symbolized, but truly uh, are united yet again. And, and again, you know, that is a further foreshadowing of the reality of what's to take place in heaven. But, uh, you know, just as in, a, in an earthly marriage, if husband and wife don't converse, if they don't spend time together, if they don't, um, you know, if you unite in, 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 in marriage, throughout the marriage, you know, so too in the life of the church. You know, if, if the people, the bride of Christ, do not unite with Jesus, you know, here in the Eucharist, you know, what, what sort of relationship is that, you know, and, and how can that really point forward to uh, the union of, of Christ and his church in heaven, you know, if we do not uh, practice uh, that union here on earth. So um, the wedding feast of Cana really is uh, extraordinary, you know, beginning of, of revelation of, of the mystery of what's to come. And, uh, 
you know, part of that what's to come is, is what we celebrate and share in here at the Eucharistic table. But it all points forward to the ultimate marriage, the wedding feast between, um, between God and his people uh, as they're united forever uh, in the joy and the bliss of, of eternity in, in heaven. So uh, all of it's pointed ahead in the, in the future, but uh, we take part in, in some of it even here and now.